Annyeong Hasu, and welcome to the Busan Midnight Movie. I'm your host, Donald, and happy May Day! Since it's International Labor Day, tonight's film is The Fat Spy, a film where no one is trying very hard. But first, it's the next episode of Zorro's Black Whip. Last time, the whip fell off a cliff into a passing wagon, and Vic got tied up the way he liked. Then the writers went on holiday, and we got a clip show of Vic being useless. Hammond has Vic taken prisoner to force Barbara to reveal the identity of the whip. When she sneaks back to untie him, the bandits spot her and open fire on what's obviously just her boots at the bottom of some curtains. Let's see if Zoro is still on vacation in episode 9 of Zoro's Black Whip, Avalanche. Welcome back! Tonight's movie is 1966's The Fat Spy. A band of teenagers go treasure hunting on a deserted island, ignorant of the fact that an agent from a cosmetics company is there searching for the fountain of youth. I got into an argument with my bosses about working on Labor Day. They said they could replace me. I said they could watch this movie. They relented. So I'm having myself a nice beach holiday. As for this flick, it has Phyllis Diller, it has Jane Mansfield, and it's featured in the documentary The 50 Worst Movies Ever Made, all of which suggest you're in for a much better time than you actually are. How bad is it? It has brown face early on, and the inexplicable racism of it doesn't even crack the top 10 list of things wrong with this film. So I'm going to enjoy my mimosas while you endure tonight's feature, The Fat Spy. Tonight's film is The Fat Spy, and what a confusing, confounding disappointment. The flick's supposed to be a parody of beach films, which may be the root of the trouble. Beach movies were always kind of a riff on themselves. So how do you make fun of something that's already a joke? My recommendation? Not like this. Here's a fun bit of trivia, though. The band bloating this washed-up corpse of a film were The Wild Ones, a band that recorded the first version of Wild Thing. You know, that song that was done better by everyone else you've ever heard do it. Heads up, the second half of the movie features someone walking into the ocean and never being seen again. That's right, the goofy comedy pairing a genre of light comedies includes a suicide. What a winner! And now back to what even Phyllis Diller can't save, The Fat Spy. That was tonight's feature, The Fat Spy, and when white nationalists talk about preserving traditional culture, they mean this. One great replacement, please. As a palate cleanser, here's a look at our next film. A film that has it all. Soldiers trapped behind enemy lines. Illicit romance. You have a room someplace where we may converse? Oh yeah, I've got a cottage. Moors haunted by ancient spirits. And sequences of kinetic action with dramatic consequences. He did pretty near Mr. Bush, didn't he? All this, plus Bella Lugosi as he tries to survive the unrelenting horror of the East Side Kids in Spooks Run Wild. Next time on the Busan Midnight Movie. Happy dreams, Slappy. Well, that looks much better, but it would almost have to... Whose shirt is this? Hello? Anyone? Why is there suddenly number four? Ah, well, that's a problem for future Don. So as always, Kamsani Don, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed yourself, standard YouTube outro. And stay safe, stay inside, and stay spooky.